Arriving in Hong Kong as darkness falls, we were met with a dazzling display of lights. Neon signs appear to be everywhere. They speak of a fascinating mixture of cultures. It is said that Hong Kong is where the East meets the West. It is a place of contrasts, geographically, socially, and economically. Thanks to its deep water harbor, and its proximity to China, this city has profited as the capitalist gateway to the communist giant to the north. Hong Kong's stunning skyline is made even more spectacular by what the Guinness World Records has proclaimed to be the world's largest permanent light and sound show. Colored lights, laser beams, and searchlights create an unforgettable spectacle this multimedia display involves 33 buildings on both sides of Victoria Harbor. It takes place nightly at 8 p.m. To fully enjoy this experience, visitors are recommended to take a harbor cruise, or you can see the sights on the famous Star Ferry that crosses regularly between Kowloon and Hong Kong Island. This is one of the unique aspects of Hong Kong that sets it apart from other places in this world. This symphony of lights display celebrates the energy, spirit, and diversity of Hong Kong. As night turns to day, Hong Kong remains an impressive sight, and our traveling companions set out to ride in one of the world's steepest funicular railways. Our destination is Victoria Peak, which rises 1,800 feet above the city below. Four million ride the peak tram annually, or over 11,000 passengers each day. The ride is one of Hong Kong's primary attractions, and like so many before us, our group obviously enjoyed the excitement of this novel experience. The Peak Tram was built in 1888 to serve affluent residents who had homes on upper levels where they had moved to escape the heat of the city. As we rise to the top, there is an unrivaled view of Hong Kong Island, Kowloon, and Victoria Harbor. Hong Kong has many natural harbors. Victoria is one of the finest in the world. The colony grew around this beautiful sheltered deep water port and today it's estimated that 75% of Hong Kong's population are concentrated here. On our itinerary is a visit to Hong Kong's famous Stanley Market, a large open-air marketplace well known for its bargains in clothing and electronics much of which are knockoffs of widely known brand names. It is a beehive of small shops. Before the British arrived, it was Hong Kong Island's largest settlement, and even then it was noted for its exceptional bazaar. We begin our tour of Aberdeen Harbor and what better way to explore this fascinating place than on board a gaily decorated sampan with a competent skipper at the helm. The harbor still has features that identify its origins as a fishing port. It was also notorious as the haunt of pirates who in those days were the scourge of the South China Sea. Aberdeen is now the largest satellite town on Hong Kong Island with a population of 60,000, 
most of whom live in spectacular high-rise buildings. Dramatically juxtaposed to this background of modern architecture are hundreds of junks and old-fashioned boats that are the floating homes for thousands of people whose livelihood is primarily fishing. The contrast in lifestyle is quite extraordinary. Visually, this is a place where the East clearly meets the West. This carpet of boats has been referred to as the floating world. The inhabitants of this floating world are a particular ethnic group, and many of them spend their lives afloat in their junks and sampans. As we turn away having had a glimpse of another world, we have fun racing our fellow travelers to the dock after we have shared a very special, thought-provoking experience. About 230 islands belong to the territory of Hong Kong. Many are surprisingly sparsely populated and are delightful getaways from city life. On our last day here, we enjoyed a lovely trip along the southern coast looking out to the South China Sea. One of the outlying islands is Tai O. It is a traditional fishing village which has been nicknamed the Venice of Hong Kong. People here live in houses called Peng Wu, meaning bamboo or stilt houses. The inhabitants continue with their living habits and customs that have lasted for centuries. There is a feeling here that you won't find in any other part of Hong Kong. Tai O has a large variety of marine products like salted fish, shrimp and squid. Its salted shrimp sauce is famous locally. For obvious reasons this has become a popular tourist destination. There is concern that this unique island will become polluted by urban life as the people of Tai O now earn their living mainly by tourism instead of fishing. We proceed across Lantau, Hong Kong's largest island. The island is noted for its impressive chain of mountains and its breathtaking views. Between the mountains there is a plateau that was the site of religious activity in the early 1900s. In 1920, three Zen master monks built the Po Lin Monastery. Its elaborately decorated buildings and lush gardens have become a favorite stopping point for tourists. But it remains an active monastery, which is attended regularly by local worshipers and many who make pilgrimages from far afield. From the gate of the monastery, you can see a giant Buddha statue. It was recently completed in 1993, but in a short time it has become the monastery's prime attraction. It is said to be one of the world's largest outdoor seated Buddhas. This solemn figure sits on a lotus base. It is surrounded by eight bronze statues representing gods who are praising Buddha. Visitors to the site must climb 268 steps to reach the base of the statue. For many, this effort is a sacred ritual.